Praise the Lord, my dear friends. I'm glad to be here with you today and share a word with you. And uh, the, I'm Ewell Humphreys. I'm speaking from, on the subject of uh, the danger of making wrong choices. We all make wrong choices sometimes. It's a sad thing, but it's the truth that we make wrong choices. What shall we learn from this lesson of making wrong choices? We learn something that we need will help us. And I want you to know, maybe you made a bad choice and you're wondering, what in the world can I do? I want you to listen to this few words on this message, only about ten minutes, but it'll be a message that will touch your heart and God will bless to your life. Uh, I'm speaking for in First Samuel, the eighth chapter. It teaches us that uh, the Israelites came to their high priest and said, we want a king over us like other nations. We don't have a king. <clears throat> You see, God had said, I'll be your God. I'll be your king. But they had gone away. He had drawn back and they were backslidden. And they didn't want to look to God as a king because they wanted to see one that they could see in the flesh. And they wanted a king like other nations had a king. And so they came. And this thing displeased Samuel. They came to Samuel. And Samuel, when they said, give us a king, and uh, Samuel prayed to the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, Hearken to the voice of the people, and uh, that they may say what they say. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me, and I should not reign over them. He said, Go ahead, Samuel, let them make their choice. Let them elect a king. They have not rejected you, they have rejected me, for I am their God. <clears throat> and so it is important that we see that the first choice we need to make is in the will of God. Is this what God wants? And how can we find that? We find it in the Word of God. We find it in the circumstances that we're living in. We find it in the Word that touches our lives. The Holy Spirit in us will impress our lives and show us the way and guide us into all truth. We need to make decisions based on prayer and the Word of God. And then the Lord will bless them. They made a mistake. They said that we want to king like other nations. They wanted to be like other nations. <clears throat> they didn't want to be different. Christians, you are different. You are different. You're not to want to be like the world. You're not to want to desire the things of the flesh. You're not to want to act like people of the world act. You're different. You belong to God. You belong to God. In the Bible, the first Corinthians, the third chapter, Paul was writing to the church at Corinth, and he said, you're having troubles in your church, and division and strife, and you're acting like mere men of the world. You see, when we allow ourselves to go after the world, we're going to come out with division and strife, and we'll be in trouble, we'll be mad, we'll be upset. You see, we're not to live like the world, trying to get everything that we can possess in ourselves, in our name, and what we want, and doing it our way, instead of learning to give and to learn to live to do it God's way. So this is so important, and I would have you learn that when you make a bad choice, you can't overcome. How shall we overcome bad choices? We overcome bad choices by obeying the Word of God. The Bible says in Romans, the 12th chapter, I beseech you, brother, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice to God. This is the way to overcome a bad choice. Go to God and say, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. But I come to you and I'm asking you to fill me with the Spirit of God and help me to walk in the love of Christ, the love of Christ, and help me to know the wisdom of God. Give me wisdom to know how to overcome this bad choice. And here's the way you do it, by renewing your mind, renewing your mind in prayer and in the Word of God to prove the good and perfect will of God for your life. God has a purpose for you, and God wants to work it out in your life. Did you know in the book of Psalms 139, it says that you were known of the Lord. He said, I knew you when you were in your mother's womb before you ever came out. And he said, I saw your whole life before me as a open, written book. Isn't that amazing? God knows where you came from, where you're going. He knows everything you've done, and He knows everything you're going to do. He knows everything. He's God. Great. Oh, God, His judgments are past 
are, are unsearchable, and his ways are past finding out. He's God. So he knows everything, but he has a purpose for your life. He loves you. He wants you to walk with him. So God is still in control. I want you to know that he still loves you. Now turn over here to the book of 1 Samuel, and a little later on in this scripture of 1 Samuel, and I want you to notice these words. And the people said to Samuel, Pray for, this, pray for us that the Lord God, that we do not die. For we have, we have added uh, unto all our sins this evil to ask for a king. And Samuel said to the people, Fear not, you've done all this wickedness, but I turn not aside from following, from following the Lord. But serve the Lord with all your heart. Even though you made a wrong choice, my dear friends, fear not. The Lord is still on the throne, and He is there to help you. Fear the Lord and serve the Lord with all your heart. Say, Dear God, now forgive me, I want to serve you. Listen, for the Lord will not forsake His people. He'll not forsake you, my dear friend, because you made a mistake. Praise God, that mistake is under the blood. It's paid for. On Calvary, Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all for you, for me. Believe in that. Believe in that blood at Calvary, at Calvary. <clears throat> oh, mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty at Calvary. Oh, believe, believe, and it's forgiven. Oh, the blood was shed for you, Christian. And then he says, Oh, praise the Lord. He'll not forsake you. He'll not forsake you. Only fear the Lord and serve Him, believe in Him with all your heart, and consider how great things He has done for you. Consider what great things He's done for you. You're still able to walk around. Hallelujah. You're not in a hospital. You're not out there dying somewhere. You're not out there in trouble. You're not out there on the street without a place to live. You've had many blessings, Christian. Oh, consider what great things God has done for you. He's given you a family. He's given you health and wealth and strength. Go on now and know that your bad choices are under the blood and you're serving the Lord who loves you, cares for you, and He's going to bring you through. So we're in a race, dear friend. The Bible says run the race because we're in that race and we're to run with patience the race set before us looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Don't give up. Keep running. Keep running. Keep running. <clears throat> I like the story told about the man from Africa who came over here in the great Olympics and was running the mile race. And he ran around the mile race and he was coming in that last turn, headed for the, for the line. He wasn't, a, he wasn't in front. He was about fifth or sixth or, or seventh behind. But he was running and all of a sudden he developed a hamstring in his leg and he fell right there on the track with his leg. And he managed to get up and hobbled and he started hobbling toward the finishing line, just hobbling. The rest of them all ran by him and all of them had crossed the line and nobody else on the track. A man ran out, his coach ran out and he brushed him aside. No, no, he said, I can make it. And he kept on hobbling toward that finish line. And everybody just watched, and there was silence. Till finally he got to the finish line and crossed it. And when he did, people stood up and began to applaud. And a newspaper reporter came to him and asked him, said, Why didn't you just, you know, give it up? You couldn't, no way you could win the race. And, and the man said, well, My people sent me to the Olympics. They hoped that I might win the race. But they didn't send me just to win the race. They sent me to finish the race. I want you to know, dear friends, God wants you to finish your race. You're not through. God's not through with you. He's coming with you. You're going through. God is your strength. And you'll say with Jesus one day, it is finished. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.